In this video, I'll be going over transpose and how to rig in ZBrush. So let's go over the transpose first. Uh, I think that's fairly easier to understand. Um, so when we look at our model in our uh, general ZBrush interface, uh, we can tell that we have this little move, scale, and rotate up here. It works a bit different than the manipulator. Actually, it works uh, very different from the manipulators we are used to seeing in the side, either Maya or Max or Soft Homogen, etc. Uh, instead, you use a chain where you use uh, your pivots and you rotate or move scale based on that. So here's my Balrog. I'm going to work. Typically, when I work with uh, transpose, I always recommend doing that at the lowest subdivision. This way, it doesn't lag as much and it typically just works better. Um, if you want to move both sides simultaneously, just turn on X. It'll uh, toggle on the uh, symmetry mode. So let's see what happens if we were to just do try to move stuff around. You know, this just little interface pops up. If you click and drag, it's basically a line. Uh, this marks one pivot, this marks the second pivot, and of course this is the center point. Um, notice how I don't have anything masked. If I were to move stuff now, it alters my full model. What if I don't want that? What if I just want to move this guy's arms up and rotate it up? Um, I'm going to turn off perspective. My recommendation is uh, to turn off perspective is just a little bit easier to work with and making sure that you're more accurate that way. Uh, next, uh, the importance is um, you have the mask areas that you don't want altered. For example, he's not masked at all right now, so his entire body is deforming based on my little transpose tool. So uh, there's several ways you can go about masking. Uh, I'm going to go back to my draw mode. Um, you can just simply uh, hold control and mask out certain areas and uh, keep masking until you get the exact area you want. That's one way. Another way is going into transpose mode, holding control. If I drag out, I can mask from the center outwards. Um, sometimes you get some pretty good results, uh, sometimes you don't. So uh, just give it a try and see what you get. I want to use the other method. It seems to have gotten me generally better results. So I'm going to mask this, mask inside, because my mirror is on, my mask on both sides is exactly the same. Uh, the next thing I typically do is I soften my mask, uh, because it's a bit sharp right now. If I hold control and click on my mask, it softens it, so there's a nice blend between the two. Uh, you can also always uh, unmask areas if you don't want, so hold control and alt, and you can always unmask. That way you can refine the general mask you have, so it fits uh, your liking a lot better. I'm going to make sure I mask these areas on the side out. Uh, that way he doesn't deform weird. I'm going to use rotate because I'm going to rotate his arms upwards. So I take rotate, click and draw from my shoulder past the hand. Then I take the outer ring, which allows me to readjust, and pull that back. The reason I'm pulling past is uh, because it stays in a perfect line. If I look on top, it stays much better that way. Um, all I have to do now is uh, rotate. So if I take it from here, it's going to rotate based on the pivot I have on the shoulder. So I'm going to move a pivot around. You can also have it so it matches a lot better. And there's my pivot. Now my arms rotate upwards. Um, you can also use it for move. Notice when I rotate, it stays in the exact same location. I can use center point now and move. Move his arms upwards if I want. Um, Again, that's because I have mirror on so both sides work. If I turn off mirror, then whatever I do on this side will not affect the other. So if I take this and rotate it around, notice why this is being affected because it's not masked. If I don't, I want it to not be controlled, it masks this area off too. So when I rotate this, it's just one arm being controlled. That's pretty much how transpose works. It's uh, so if I wanted. To, Thing to do with certain pose, I can have this arm straight down here and noticing the pecs coming in a lot more than I might want. I'm going to go in there, remask that area a little bit better. That way, when I bend it down, it's not going to affect it. But as we can see, it's a bit uh, sharp. I'm going to do that, mask that, control click so it's softer. And now, when I pull it down, it's a lot more natural. Move this shoulder downwards. And uh, now his arms are straight down, this arm right here is out. Um, let's say I want to bend this arm inwards, just right there, and nothing else. I'm going to now mask this whole arm over here off. Unmask this, holding Control and Alt around this general area. Control click to soften it and redraw my mask. 
my little transpose I meant. And I'm going to bend this. Uh, bending in the front view, though, might not be ideal. So I'm going to go in the side view here, redraw my transpose. Go in the front, position this in the right location. Now it's a lot more ideal. I can just take this point now, probably not use move, but use rotate, and rotate that in. And now I've just bent uh, that part of the arm in. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and the reason why I do in the lower subdivision is because this affects the higher subdivision levels. So I go back to Q, my draw mode. If I unmask everything, I can go back my, up my subdivision levels, and you can see whatever I've done has affected all the higher levels. I also recommend going back and adjusting and re-sculpting certain areas so it fits uh, a lot better. Uh, generally though, I lucked out and this looks uh, fairly accurate based on uh, the deformation of the body. Maybe lower the pecs down here a little bit more. Otherwise, um, you have some pretty good results. So next, I want to go over is how to rig a character inside uh, ZBrush. I'm going to undo this whole thing, so I'll go back to where I was before. I'll just have to reload my tool. It might be easier that way. Reloading this takes a while. Sorry, I'm using my laptop, so it's a bit weaker. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to delete higher. Uh, I sculpted this on a significantly stronger machine, and I just don't trust my laptop uh, rigging a higher poly mesh. Um, so I'm going to use this. Uh, so here we go. Here's my mesh. What you want to do is you choose a Z sphere. Then you go under rigging on the side over here. Click select mesh. You want to select the mesh you, dis you wish to rig. And I'm using this one right here. He pops up. Uh, you can move the Z sphere up to the center. Uh, so I'm going to use move. Let's move this up. I also recommend using a smaller brush when doing, dealing with this. And I'm going to turn on mirror. So whatever you do on one side does to the other. And it stays exactly in the middle when I move it up. So I'm moving generally to the core of the creature and moving it where his chest is going to be. So you already know how to use Z-spheres. It's going to be very similar to creating your base mesh with Z-spheres. Uh, that's all you're doing is creating the underlining wire um, uh, fr structural frame underneath them. So I'm going to scale this up. So I switched over to scale. That's the shortcut letter E. And scale that up so it takes up more of his chest area in the side view. Move that back to the right location. Uh, then I'm going to go back to Q, which is my draw mode. I'm going to draw the areas where I see the shoulders are supposed to be. Use my move, which is W, to where your shoulders are at. Again, I'm going between the sh front and side view constantly. That way I can make sure everything aligns properly. And now, Q again. Draw out where my wrist is going to be at. Move that there, scale that down, so fairly large. Go to the side view. Snap that there. Press Q to insert. You can insert in between. I click that inside. Use W, move that back to fit the uh, elbow better. Uh, and I'm going to move this up so it just matches perfectly. If you click in between, it'll move uh, a huge chunk together. If you click exactly on the z-sphere, you can move just that z-sphere and none of those children. Now I'm not going to take too much time to put uh, all the uh, the joints inside the fingers. I figure you get the point of it at this, uh, this juncture already. So back to Q. And draw this area. It's going to be his hip. I'm going to move that back to where his hip area is. And scale that up so it takes up more of that area. Making sure everything looks okay. Q, draw where the knees are going to be. Take that and pull down where the knees are. If I want to, just to make sure everything's safe, I can just create a hip area right here and then create an extra one for my knees. That way everything just kind of fits better. Move this out and move this in so it matches the hip area much better. Scale up my knee. Take my front and side that everything's proper. Q to create another joint, W moving it down here. There goes my ankle. And scale this up. 
Q again, draw a new uh, Z sphere. Pull that down. And scale that up. Move that in. Now for uh, the tail, move to the back. Q to the center. I'm going to move this all the way down. So W, pull this all the way down to the tip. Scale this down. Q to insert in between. How many uh, joints is entirely up to you. And now I'm going to insert some more for his head. I also want to give one for his jaw. Uh, and some for the horns themselves. This way, uh, when I move the jaw up and down, the horns don't deform with it. So here goes the neck joint. Let's scale that up. He has a fairly large neck. Back to Q. In the middle, pull that out. Move this to generally where his head's going to be. And scale that up. And I'm going to insert a joint for each horn, the front part of his face, well, I guess the top part, and then the jaw. Q, that's for the front part, lower jaw, the two horns. I'm going to get this uh, little section here first. I'm using move, move that down. Use the bottom jaw, pull, pull that down. Yes, I know it looks a bit funny, but it does do the trick. And I'm going to scale this up. Draw another one. W, move that down. Scale. Side view. I'm going to move that forward. Q to insert. Moving it all out right now. There goes that top. Q again. Let's make sure the side is proper. I have to move that circle up over here so everything matches better. And with that, my uh, uh, creature uh, is rigged. So to get this to actually move, what you need to do is bind your mesh. You click bind. You wait for uh, ZBrush to think about it, and once it's connected, you can start posing. So if I click on my rotate now, I can rotate any of my uh, parts, and uh, my uh, character will move. Uh, the problem is, uh, again, my machine is not the strongest, so it's chugging a bit. You can see some slight movement. There it goes. It's actually pretty cool when it works. Um, if you've already retoppled your character and you have a lower res version, uh, you can definitely use that one and pose it around. I'm going to uh, do that. I'm going to unbind my mesh. I'm just going to click bind a mesh. It goes back to the original pose. And if I go back to my original Balrog over here, I can go back down to a significantly lower mesh, maybe a second level. If I have a normal map or displacement map, I should be okay. I can just pose it first. Uh, I already probably baked out everything at this point. Take it back to Maya or Max or whatever uh, tool you prefer and just load that up while, after you pose your character. So I'll just bind this version. If I go back to my Z sphere here, under rigging, I can select another mesh. I want to choose my lower res one so it doesn't freak out too much. Click bind. It should work significantly faster now so it can rotate around and you can see how everything moves. And when I'm doing this I can tell maybe I should have put some uh, Z spheres back here to make sure these parts of the back uh, didn't deform so odd. Uh, I can twist my uh, uh, forearms. I can simply just use move, move whichever part I want. If I look at the jaw right here, if I use rotate, I can rotate the jaw uh, open and closed if I just get the right one. There it goes. I'm going to press A, you can see a preview of how it looks like. His jaw opens and his uh, Horns aren't skewing. Uh, internal perspective, you prefer that. I can move each leg individually, so if I turned off X, 
uh, and rotated. I'm going to rotate just the leg right now. It's actually pretty accurate. Uh, the weighting system in here was surprisingly good. Um, I didn't have to do too much different changes. I always control Z to go back. If anything, uh, I might have, I uh, probably should have um, added some more points inside. So being that I noticed a little problem, I can unbind my mesh, go back, insert a bit more. Just one more right there makes a big difference. So I'm going to bind it now. So this time when I rotate, you're going to notice it's not going to kind of scale. I'm not going to deform the side as much because I have another Z-sphere there trying to keep it in place. So that's the general rule is you just place it where you need to. But I always recommend going back and uh, fixing your sculpt a bit. So once you're done, you can take this new mesh and create a new uh, adaptive skin. I'm going to always go adaptive skin, make adaptive skin, and you'll have the new one on top. It's really, really cool. I love how it works very fast. Um, I would say if you didn't want to spend time rigging everything inside Maya or Max, it's a very fast way to just pre-pose your character real quick. Probably can turn on projection uh, if you had... This is also the same way you go about doing with uh, creating new topology. You also have to rig and bind it and add a topology through here, but that'll be another uh, demo. But for now, that's how you go about uh, moving your character around. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.